Hello everyone, Craig Dunkerley here and welcome to the Beyond Growth Show. I'm here with the always awesome Claudia Harvey. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Hey, everybody. So nice to be here today. Today is a very, very special day on the podcast. Craig, ask me why. Why is it a special day? Well, we have three guests coming on. And those guests are recently acquired by Digit Apparel in a company called Suncare. And Suncare is the first acquisition of Digit Apparel with a revolutionary product that will change the world. And the founders, inventors of the products are here today, and we're going to talk about that product today. Very nice. Looking forward to it. Great, great guys. They are. They're amazing. They're smart, brilliant, uh, innovators, young. Uh, they, will, they, they are changing the world with the product, and Dig it. I'm so proud that Dig it has been able to align ourselves with the product and Tell you a little bit about the product, just a little bit, because the guys are going to talk a lot more about the product, but the product is a UV sensor dot sticker, for lack of a better term. You wear it, and it tells you when you need to reapply your sunscreen. So many people, obviously, get burned, don't know when the UV rays are affecting their skin. This UV sun detector will tell a person as it turns purple when to reapply their sunscreen and it then turns clear when you are protected by your sunscreen and hence the you can go about your day and have freedom in the sun to enjoy a wonderful active lifestyle with a safety of knowing that your skin is protected from the harmful UV rays. So I am so excited to have these guests on today. Okay, Claudia, well, why don't you tell us briefly about how you met them? How did you come to know about them? Okay, so this is this is an evolution story and you know, many people, you know, you start a company and you have a great idea and you start a company and you get to two years and you persevere and you keep going and you're, you become a going concern company, not a startup company. So we got to, in Digit, we got to about the six, seven year mark. And we were, with my team, we were around um, a table on what, our creative director's farmhouse uh, having a retreat and we were talking about other products that we'd like to bring into the company that will also affect lives that will still meet the, the same avatar, the same person that was buying our other products, but adding to the not women that care about themselves, but women that care about themselves and their families. And then we came across this little company called Suncare. And Suncare had a product that was called Spot My UV. They were just in their infancy of launching. In fact, they were doing test trials in Australia. So I contacted them and um, I actually didn't know that they were in their infancy of their business at the time, but I contacted them way back then and said that I was very interested in actually white labeling their product under the Digit banner. So Digit in the Sun was created in 2017 and 18, and we launched in November of 2018, Digit in the Sun, which some of you might've heard me talk about in the past. So fast forward now to 2020 and COVID hits, we get head down, we you know reposition the company and take opportunities when they knock on our door and we worked to acquire SunCare and rebrand Digging in the Sun to their product, which is Spot My UV. So it was an evolution of basically from 2017 to basically, you know, three months ago when Digit acquired the company. And then we've also incorporated the founders and the inventors into our employee. So they are part of our team. So we are going to be growing and evolving with these amazing young men, smart, brilliant nanotechnology engineers. Like I never thought in a million years I'd be partnered with nanotechnology engineers, <laughs> but, but uh, you'd never know what to meet them because they're so humble and they're just such nice guys. So, and you will meet them in a few minutes. Yes, I am. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Spotify channel, and please comment and click the bell for updates to the videos. But before we continue, I will actually step back for the most part through this show, Claudia. You've been working so closely with the guys and so closely with SunCare that I think the conversation will be between you and then, and I am really looking forward to sitting back and listening. Thanks, Craig.
Let's bring on the guys. Hello, Andrew, Derek, and Chad. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. How are you? Hello, Claudia. Hello. I am, like I said to the world before, I'm so excited to have you on our podcast today and finally be able to announce that SunCare is part of Dig It, and we're introducing you to the world. And I am so thrilled that you guys are here today. Good morning. Good morning. We're very excited to be here, too. <laughs> So, oh, you know, the listeners and viewers have heard about Craig's background, my background. Um, you guys started a company way back when you guys were students at university. So tell us a little bit about the, the, really the startup story, the evolution of the story and the inception of why you even created this product. For sure. So we are from the University of Waterloo. And we started there in 2010 when we were first year students and we became friends pretty quickly. Luckily, we were lucky to form a nice study group with each other. We would hang out together. And then throughout our journey as engineers at the University of Waterloo, we eventually came to a point where uh, we had to do our, our fourth year design project, uh, which I believe is a requirement of all engineering schools across, across Canada. And when we were doing this project, Waterloo has a really strong community for entrepreneurship that we were sort of getting acquainted with at that time we're very you know we're very well involved yet but we were getting there and as as this idea for the project came up we said okay how can we you know maybe take this beyond just a school project is there is there a way that we can tackle uh the idea we want to we want to address in in a way that's not just a school project uh we were thinking always at that time what do we want to do with our lives after we graduate we've got one year left and how do we go from there so we didn't quite tackle it the same way some of our classmates were, where it was, okay, you know, what are some of the things we learned in class that we can then, you know, apply to a, a school project? We, we started from an idea stage, which uh, turns out later, that's, that's kind of the right way to start entrepreneurship. So we got a bit lucky there. And we, we started thinking about different ideas. And we came up with the idea for how to protect ourselves from the sun, how to better prevent sunburn, skin cancer, skin aging, all these negative effects. It seems simple sunscreen exists, you know, why is it so difficult? And we eventually decided, okay, there's got to be an easy way to address this or an easier way to address this, where we then were able to use our background as nanotechnology engineers and, and, and figure out different materials that we could use to create to solve this problem, to create a solution to help people use sunscreen more effectively. Um, and, and, and we're definitely very fortunate that it's come as far as it has, obviously. And uh, we built it from 2015 when we graduated uh, throughout our last year of school, uh, on, on, on to now, where uh, now we're, we're, we're joining up with Ticket Apparel to, to take it to the next level. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I'm so thrilled. So let's, let's reverse it. Let's reverse yep. it. So you guys were engineers at University of Waterloo. So it's not, you know, you're innovators, and it's not a typical path to really go down the road of becoming entrepreneurs. Normally, you know, engineers, you have a, a you're your engineers, you go and get, get a job and you're, you move on in the world. So what made you kind of fall in love with the idea of creating this as a company and not just having it as a school project, but taking it to the next level? I think that uh, like the entrepreneurship part came easily because Waterloo makes us all do co-ops, right? So you work at different companies uh, every other academic term. And at this point in our, this was our last co-op term. So not only had we become pretty comfortable with the fact that, you know, like we can probably find a job whenever we want. You know, like I had a job offer at Facebook. Um, the other guys had done lots of other cool co-op jobs as well. And it's, you know, the idea of doing a startup isn't going to make those job offers go away. If anything, you're going to learn more, mm -hmm. become more valuable, uh, higher compared to any other uh, and, and any other person graduated from any university having a, this entrepreneurship experience. Mm -hmm. So just came down to money and said, well, is there, can we, can we fund this? Can we get this idea off the ground? Mm -hmm. And luckily the Waterloo school has a program where you can take a co-op term to start a company. And there is money available if like for the, for the, for the best ideas to start a company. And that's where me and Andrew, um, took our last co-op term to start SunCare. That was in May, 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, when we were still undergrads and we did win that, that $5,000, which, you know, paid for our incorporation, some starting materials, got us hooked up into a lab space and gave us the 
time to do it. So it was really, it was more just like uh, the, the system gave us everything we needed and it was only it just up to us to say, yes, we'll take advantage of it. Right, right. And it was a choice to step into that space and take advantage of the opportunities that you, that you had. But you did have a really cool idea, a really cool, cool product. So what is, what's the role of each of you? And when did you, when you started it, what was the role of each of you? When we started our roles, me, Chad, and Derek were primarily in research and development. Um, Derek was focused a lot as well on understanding the regulatory aspects of the technology and what we would have to do to actually launch a healthcare product like this. Obviously, we want to make sure when we're putting together a, a new product, it's, it's got to be safe. And of course it is. And, and we, we found that out very early and there's no risk there. But that was that was a main priority for us. So understanding what are the FDA rules or Health Canada's rules. Um, we started off, obviously, with the technology development, because once you have the idea, you have to be able to prove that it works. Um, so Chad and I and Derek were, were, were very focused on that. Derek and I started that during our first enterprise co-op term. So that was through the Conrad School at, at, at University of Waterloo. Great program for us to get started because it provided us that initial stage of, of funding as well as a space to work. We were able to work through the Velocity Science Program, uh, Velocity makes it very easy to start companies in Waterloo because they have so much mentorship available as well as the lab space where we were able to work. So we started out in that initial co-op term, uh, building proof of concepts, trying things out. Uh, we actually started with the idea for a marker. So having something you would draw on your skin to be able to then see what would change. Um, and that was a very interesting idea but we quickly learned, uh, again, listen to your customers, what people want. And mothers in particular were bringing up very valid concerns about does this market or, you know, is it safe? Am I drawing this weird ink on my skin? I don't want my kids to be drawing markers on their skin if they're not going to be allowed to draw, the, you know, the crayon mark, like another, another marker, Crayola marker on their skin. Uh, and, and we listened to those concerns and we said, well, all of those are addressed by making it a sticker because stickers are familiar, stickers are safe, mm -hmm. stickers are fun. Kids love stickers. Who, which kid doesn't want to put on a sticker, right? Imagine the fun designs that we could put on these stickers and, and make them very, 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 very interesting for the child. So we were, uh, we were focused on then the sticker development. And then now the roles, I'm, I'm handling the finance, legal, basically the CEO role. Uh, Derek moved over to a sales role once we had a product to sell and Chad stayed on the uh, patent uh, intellectual property technology side and manufacturing, developing and making it. So I'm right. managing kind of the business, Derek selling the product that Chad is, is, is making. Which is amazing. I mean, these friendships turned into an evolution of a business partnership that actually worked, which is incredibly unusual. Like many, many people start partnerships with pie in the sky ideas and then the partnerships fade or, or fall away, um, but you persevered. And so Chad, tell us a little bit about the difference between this sticker or Derek or Andrew, either anybody, tell us the difference between this sticker, why this is unique and what is the actual formula and the patent for? Yeah. Well, what makes our sticker unique and frankly, one of the only working stickers on the market that will give you sun protection awareness is that it has what we call a skin mimicking technology to it. So this is really the core IP that we developed at SunCare. And what this does is it allows sunscreen to interact with the sticker in the same way that it does your skin. So if you're out swimming or enjoying an active day in the sun, your sunscreen is going to come off faster generally than if you were just lazing about. So the sticker is actually designed to also have the sunscreen come off of it at the same rate that it does your skin, depending on the activity you're doing. And that's really what our core IP uh, makes us stand out from the rest of the uh, competition, because we're going to be true and real uh, to your actual sun exposure. It's not just a gimmick like some of the others that exist. So it's activated by the UV rays from the sun. So the dot turns from purple when you're not protected to clear when you're protected with your sunblock back to purple in gradual stages as your sunblock leaves your body. That's right. 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 Safe for all ages, safe for um, any type of skin. And Derek, you had the wonderful ability to actually test market this in Australia, which is probably one of the hard, hottest continents in the world. So tell us about that experience and how you test marketed it. Yeah, so um, in 2016, we were lucky enough to receive, a, you know, as entrepreneurs do, you chase money, a grant from the uh, government of Queensland 
for uh, for a hundred thousand um, dollars. They were attracting you know promising international entrepreneurs to Queensland to help develop the uh, the ecosystems there. So uh, you know what's not to love with Queensland is the skin cancer capital of the world. Um, Two hundred and fifty people per hundred thousand get skin cancer every year, which is uh, triple the Australian average, and the Australian is uh, twelve times the Canadian average. So to put it in perspective, 80% of people in Australia get skin cancer. Wow. Um, almost 100% in Queensland, the state. Um, and I, all, all, the, all the epidemiology research, all the skin cancer research, all the sunscreen research is all done in Queensland for that purpose because there's the hole in the ozone that's right over the state. And uh, in the summer, you know, we were, we're accustomed here in the, in the north to think that UV9, UV10, as high as it goes. Uh, the first day I arrived in Queensland, it was UV 16. Wow. UV index is 16, um, which means that, you know, for someone with, with, with light skin like I do, it's five minutes until you are sunburned. Wow. And, uh, you know, you, you quickly learn that the, the, the sun's out to get you in Australia. Um, the friends that I made when I got there, it didn't take me long to figure out that every single person knew someone who had died from melanoma. Wow. Um, the, the first friends that I made had melanoma when they were nine and 10, like the very first friends. They, they, all, they all, all had skin cancers. One of our employees that we had in Australia, uh, our regional manager, uh, Sam, uh, while he was working for us, had to go get skin cancer cut out of him. Um, it's it's and, an and, unbelievable problem in Australia. And, and put, put the viewers can see us, but for listeners, we have to emphasize that all of you, all three of you are under the age of 30. So Sam, who is, which was um, one of your employees in Australia four years ago, he was in his early 20s, right? Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, he was 25. Right. Um, and I got the other people, I think they were nine, they were 10, they were 13. Uh, we did a docu-series on YouTube, if you look it up. It's uh, on the SunCare, S-U-N-C-A-Y-R YouTube channel called Melanoma with the M-E in melanoma in, in square brackets. Um, where we document the stories of seven different people who, uh, you know, who I just met while I was over there have really touching stories, really, really scary stories of melanoma. Amazing. So we went out and started testing the product, and I'm sure you had some amazing results. So you were able to hone really quickly the formula and the way that the product can work and change and adapt to get to market in North America, what, 2018? 17, 18? Yeah, yeah. So we, we went over there in 2016 with the purpose of uh, clinical trials. Um, the Australian government's got an amazing clinical trial program. 50% of all money that you spend is reimbursed as a tax credit. Wow. So you, you, you literally double your runway um, doing clinical trials in Australia. So we went over there and we proved that our stickers do act like skin. The skin mimicking technology that Chad developed does work. Um, and we did a soft launch in 2018 at the at the Ashes Cricket Series in Brisbane, which is uh, the the Australian equivalent of the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there on, we launched 2019 and uh, in Australian retail, 2020 in North America, and then uh, coming coming to a store near you in 2021. Right. So very exciting news in the United States. Tell us where we're going to be. The best place to find Spot My UV in retail will be at uh, your local CVS store. We're going to be in 5,000 CVS stores distributed throughout the United States. So that's about half of the distribution of CVS. Uh, in addition, you can always find us online, target.com and uh, digitapparel.com, spotmyuv.com. And if you, I, I could spend the next six minutes of this podcast listing, the other places on .com. Amazing. Um, but uh, you will, any search for Spot My UV, simply S-P-O-T-M-Y-U-V, Spot My UV, uh, will bring it up. Oh, amazing. So I, I really want to emphasize, because a lot of the viewers and listeners um, think about startups, think about how to, they have an idea, and they're daunted by the concept of even starting an idea. And your story talks about the evolution of creating an idea from inception, from thought, from the need to then launching the product in trials and over time and testing the market, testing the product, going back and forth, but literally going from an idea, what, 2014, to um, clinical trials 2016-17 and launching into the marketplace 2018-19. And now you are internationally sold across 
United States and in Canada and in the UK as well. So there is, and in Australia also. So it's, it's, it can be done no matter what age, but you guys had a lot of help from your university and you seem to have helped with each other that, um, you know, you could do this idea. Um, so what is the, you know, I always ask this to, to people that are partnerships, what's the hardest thing about working together? Because you're friends, right? What's the hardest thing about working together? Good question. I think at this point, yeah. uh, you know, we've only kept around the people that you work well with. Um, I don't think that we've typically had too many struggles working together. Uh, you know, we've been, we have been working together for 10 cumulative years, right. uh, whether it's school projects or this company. Um, you know, like we see each other more than we see anybody else in our lives. <laughs> I think the hardest part about working together that I've experienced, not, not in this team itself, but just in general is, is just learning to communicate and learning to recognize your strengths and weaknesses. And I think that that's why this team has been successful together is because we've recognized, okay, here are the roles that, you know, whether you're particularly have a strength in this role or, or we've identified weaknesses in other people and, 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 and someone else can fill that role. Um, and then being able to communicate with each other. So when Derek is in Australia, he was in Australia for over a year and we had to communicate with each other as, as founders, be Chad and Derek over email, over different communication flat platforms, messaging apps, and, and through video calls like this. And we, we learned through our initial time working together that a we could work together we could get along when we were doing school projects and then in our first couple of years of the startup we learned okay what are the different strengths and weaknesses we have how do we communicate with each other so that by the time derek was was off to 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 australia that long distance wasn't as big of a problem and i think that finally what we've recognized is that all of us are going for the same goal we all have the same end goal in mind and so even if there's disagreements or, or, or we're having struggles in some way nobody's you know out to get anybody else in any way it's just, we're all looking for the same goal we're all going towards the same direction we just might have different ideas of how to get there but let's let's you know figure out the best way to do that and then commit and go right so right Right. And so, I mean, it sounds like you take your egos and you chuck them at the door and there's no egos. Yes. <laughs> we, 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 we are very lack of ego. We, 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 do, we do not have egos, which I think is another big thing too. That it's makes a us huge, uh, work well together. Yeah. It's, it, I have to say it's a huge thing. I think so many people have partnerships that they just want to one up each other and it's a, it's a huge thing. So again, kudos to you. Um, so you were, you were offered obviously jobs when you were graduating and when you were in your co-ops. And I'm going to ask, are you very happy with the route that you took? I wouldn't Definitely. change it. Yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. Excellent. Um, I mean, I'm glad to hear that since we're now partners together. So I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think a big, like, you know, six years is a long time to do a company without having uh, a major, you know, we never had the, the multi-million dollar funding round. We never had the multi-million dollar uh, sales and exit. Well, because you know, developing a life science product takes clinical trials and R&D, manufacturing, and scale up. These things don't come quickly. And uh, being a consumer product, it's it's not a typical stage where you get investors. You know, investors are uh, are, are few and far between. I think a big thing between us that we all share is that we're not heavily motivated by. Um, you know, by, by, and by envy, envy of people who are making more money than us. Right. And we're not terribly motivated by making a big salary. We're all pretty happy guys. You know, we, we spend our nights ordering in a pizza and playing board games. And that's, that is, that is actually how we spend our nights. That is not a, that is not <laughs> an exaggeration that we do it once a week, you know? Um, so like, we're pretty easy to keep happy and the, the vision and the people that we want to help by making this product uh, are the driving force and you know they've been there the whole time right right so I want to I want to touch on something you just said when you started this product and you started the company did you have a long-term vision of what this product would do or did you have a short-term goal and then you, you just moved your goal post every year two years how did you how did you foresee this product where 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 would the impact be I think that we had 
a bit of both, but we definitely did have a long term have a long term vision. It just might be a bit different than what a lot of people's long term vision might might be. For us, it was we know that we have a solution here that can truly help people if we make it work. So the short term goal is obviously making it work and then figuring out how to commercialize it from there. But the long term goal for us has always been again putting EO aside. We just want to get this product out there. It doesn't matter how it gets out there. It doesn't matter what form. It doesn't have to have our name on it. But we just want this product out there and helping people in the best way possible. So that's why you know, joining forces with Digit Apparel is so appealing because this is going to allow us to get this product out there to help many more people than our previous distribution was going to allow us to. And that was really the long-term guiding. And, and, and we've said that multiple times. It doesn't maybe sound glamorous, but that was always, we, we want to get this product out because we truly believe it will help people. And we just want to be able to help the most people possible. That's that's our end goal. Right. And, you know, it's interesting because we've had some podcast guests on that we've spoken about the difference between 20 years ago launching a, a, a company, 10 years ago launching a company, and today. And many, many younger people that are launching products, companies, don't necessarily launch it for the uh, for the um, goal of making money. That's wasn't, it's very, very clear that it was not your goal. Your goal was to get a product out there into people's hands that would change lives, change skin, uh, skin cancer, um, change the way that people have enjoyment to be outside and freedom. So, and, you know, despite what people say, I think global warming is becoming even more prevalent today. So places like Australia, which 2016 was massively impacted by your statistics, Derek, it's going to get worse and worse unless we make dramatic changes. But how are we as humans and people going to be able to survive in the next 10 years in an environment, in a sunshine environment that is impacted by things that are not in our control? So, um, so I, I mean, that's great. So anyway, is there anything that you would like to say to any young people that are listening? Because we do have some very young members of our, our viewers and our listeners. Um, you know, you are still under 30. And you are inspirational because you have created a product literally from your classroom, launched it, and you're still in, in your infancy of your careers and, and building what you are. So what would you say to a person that's you know, 10 years younger than you that's just entering into a space that might have an idea? I would say the biggest thing for us was just start and... Canada has so many resources for helping you start that for us, it became simply, well, it's easy to keep going. It's not difficult to keep going through the in university programs. We talked about Velocity, Conrad School. Uh, what about the regional incubation centers like Communitech in Kitchener, the RIC Center in Mississauga, J Labs at Toronto, Mars in, in Toronto, and the Ontario Centers of Excellence, different funding programs, FedDev. Canada makes it, I, I won't say easy, but there's a lot of opportunities to start your company. And for us, it was not a difficult decision to continue because we were able to get so much support in the beginning and during the interim before we were able to raise money to be able to get to a stage where we could raise money from outside investors and, and keep the company going. Right. So you Yeah, and for, for anyone international, like the ability to chase money is global. Like we we started up in Canada. We also have an office in the United States that we started up with a grant from the state of New York. We have an office in Australia we started from a grant from the state of Queensland. Like our friends who have also uh, started startups uh, did it in like, you know, they moved to Berlin. I have friends that have moved to Chile. Um, to Mexico. There are lots of different, it, it's a, it just, there are lots of money to be had for great ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just taking the opportunity and taking the step towards a dream that becomes a goal to become reality, right? So just taking yeah. that opportunity and surrounding yourself with amazing positive people that you can rely on that got your back. Absolutely. So. I think that that's, that's a good point to touch on because, you know, for anybody who's listening that isn't sure or doesn't know where to start, you know, even looking at taking a summer term or a co-op term, working with another company that's a startup in an early stage, I think that would be great experience for you to learn and see how things are done. Get Take the knowledge from those founders and that company, learn for yourself. And we at Suncare have had a number of different students work for us that have gone off 
and started their own startups as spinoffs after working for us, getting a feel for it and understanding. So it's completely possible no matter who you are and where you come from. If you have the idea and you want to pursue it, that's what you have to do. That's great. That's awesome. Chad, I think you have one of our retail boxes. Want to hold it up to the yeah. screen? So everyone can sort of see what the, the product will look like in store, Canada, the United States, across Canada, the United States this year for sure. So it's Spot My UV. And where can people get Spot My UV, Derek? Oh, and that's what the actual sticker looks like. Oh my gosh, we didn't even talk about that. <laughs> yeah, this is so, Derek, give us a quick little like um, synopsis of what the actual sticker does. Yeah, um, so this is a sheet of stickers. As you can see, I've already used one. You simply just take a sticker off, put it on. Once you apply sunscreen and you head outside, it will turn clear. And then uh, once you go outside, you just watch the sticker. And when you see it turn purple, it means that your sunscreen has worn off. Um, maybe from abrasion, maybe from swimming, maybe from just spending a lot of time outside the sticker does measure your actual sunscreen, so each sunscreen you use will give you a different uh, a different response. And each person that you're with will probably see a different time to change color. Uh, it's a truly uh, it's it's a truly personalized sensor. And then you see the sticker turn purple again. You apply more sunscreen, the sticker will go back to clear, and you can use uh, you can use one for 12 hours of activity. Um, you can buy it in. Seven countries in the world, in Boots in the UK, at Kempro in Australia, CVS, Wakefern's and ShopRite stores um, uh, in, in the United States. You can buy it in Canada, at Lee Valley Tools, Federated Co-op stores. Exactly, exactly. And always online at spotmyuv.com. So where can people get a sample of this? Because we are offering some free samples. So where can people get a sample of this? www.spotmyuv.com. Spotmyuv.com. Amazing. All right. Well, guys, it's, it's going to be an absolute thrill working with you. And we, we just, just started working together. And I'm so, so excited to see what the next year is going to bring, the next two years, three years, how we're going to change lives, how we're going to impact lives, um, how you guys will impact the next generation, the generation that comes behind you. And I'm very, very excited to be working together. And thank you so much for being on our podcast. Thank you so Thanks much for having us. Thank you. Yeah, very, yeah. very thrilled. Thanks, guys. Uh, I really enjoyed being on, on the listening end of the podcast. Yeah. It was wonderful hearing how you guys built this and how you work together phenomenal job so fantastic good good on you guys so again so thank much. you very much appreciate you joining us and this does bring this segment of the podcast show to an end and again thank you very much guys for joining us yeah. thanks craig thanks Claudia. we we end every single episode by a closing quote and i'm going to give you the guys the quiz on who said this all right are you ready yeah. Okay, so quote, to me, ideas are worth nothing unless executed. They are just a small, they are just a multiplier. Execution is worth millions. Who said that? Jack Ma. Nope. Uh, Teal. Nope. Horowitz or Andre Andreessen. Nope. Close. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Steve Jobs. Uh, Steve Jobs. Jobs. Oh, smart, <laughs> yes. I've read, his auto, I've read his biography. That's too bad. Oh, I, I, I would have thought I'd remember that. That's too bad. Well, there was a lot in that biography. It was, it was like 25 I hours of long. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. It was 25 hours, I think. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, great. So uh, our next guest is Paul Rosenberg, founder of Tertia Oculus Business Synergies and an award-winning transformational leader and performance accelerator. Very excited to have him on. And everybody that's listening and watching, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our podcast channel. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that notification bell to get updates on our latest podcasts. Once again, Chad, Andrew, and Derek, so, so excited to be working with you and so excited to have you on our podcast. And I cannot wait to see what happens in 2021.